Everybody, this is Rick Troutman, a.k.a. The Trout, and I'm very proud, along with my partner in crime, KT, to present our very first video podcast with a very special guest, Randy James of 92.5, the Lone Star radio station in the Dallas area. Randy was kind enough to take some time out of his busy schedule to talk about what it was like, and it is like, to become a radio personality and the people he met that were interesting along the way. So we hope you enjoy this very first video podcast. And if you like it, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more, please subscribe to our channel at KT and the Drought. So that's it for now. From KT and I, remember, life short, eat more bacon. See ya. I'm KT. And I'm the Trout, and welcome to episode, which one? Where are we at? Episode eight. 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 Lord, eight. mercy. Eight. We thought oh, it would only last 20. And now oh, I can't eight. believe I'm seeing something <laughs> through for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we have a special. Uh, really special guest today I'm excited to talk to. And uh, I'll let Mr. Rick kind of go more into that. But uh, Oh, you gave him my good. name. Now everybody knows who I am. <laughs> oh, oh, did I say that? I thought I said it started with a P, but maybe. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so our special guest today is Randy James from Lone Star ninety two point five. I'm gonna go into my radio voice. Dude. Uh, he's on the Bo and Jim show, and if you all have not listened to it, you're crazy if you haven't because he's been on it. How many years you've been on there, Randy? Doing with the Bo and Jim show. With, well, with Bo and with me and Bo, we did. Uh, we've been around for, since two thousand two. Well. Nice. So that's 19 years. years. And then the Bo and Jim show, the, as you hear it today, uh, since 2004. So that's 17 years we've the wow. three been together. That's awesome. You guys are like yeah. a staple in this area. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm sure around the, around the U.S. as well, a lot of people. Yeah. It, and, you know, we, you know, especially with, the, with us being on iHeartRadio, um, we do get people listening to us regularly that used to live here that yeah. – Moved somewhere else like uh, Columbus, Ohio. We got this guy, uh, Pat Lampo, who, and I remember his name because I talk to him every day on Facebook, but uh, he listens to us from San Jose, California. That's cool. Um, nice. Some people even from uh, from overseas, and we're kind of uh, shocked sometimes that uh, that uh, uh, some of these servicemen over there are getting this. You know? Sure. Oh, yeah, it's well, cool. It's cool. Yeah, was, and, you yeah, know, so that- Bo and Jim have been, you know, just such a mainstay here in Dallas Fort Worth, like you said. I mean, even before yeah. I got here, you know. Yeah. Uh, in fact, when I first moved here, I, I was working for a station that was uh, just a pimple on their ass. I mean, Q102 was just the big behemoth, and mm-hmm. Bo and Jim was just, you know, the kings had been the kings for about Jeez. ten years at that point, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's been a great ride, and and uh, um, I, you know, I can't believe they. They still pay us to do this and haven't heard it out yet. But, uh, yeah. It's all good, so, man. Let me just give a quick how I met Randy. So I used to be president of a nonprofit here locally, and we had a music festival. It's been three years ago now. I don't remember what it was. So one of our board members came to me and says, why don't you ask Randy James to come to it? And I went, Randy doesn't know me. <laughs> you know, so um, I reached out to Randy and uh, – <laughs> I found him. He's he's not hard to find. You do you do voiceovers. Yeah, you do uh, voiceover. So I found him on LinkedIn. I called him and I said, "Would you mind doing this?" And without hesitation, he came up, met all the bands at High to him, and was very kind. But what I also knew about after talking to Randy was he does a lot of community work. So he does help a lot of people. So that's where it all started. And we just yeah. kind of I see him. He comes up to close to where. KT and I live because his band plays up at the Harley Davidson place. Yeah, American Eagle Harley Davidson. You're yeah. kicking the Harley dealer. That's awesome. And uh, that, so I saw him. I said, "Why don't you come hey, on?" Speaking, this, this, yeah. speaking of that time, Rick, remember? Um, um, you know, uh, Shane Bell band. Shane, yeah, how's? Yeah, yeah, are you yeah. talking to him much? Yeah, we just actually interviewed him. What was it, about a month ago. 18, yeah, I think. yeah. No, that was great. So, he was a so. Really cool I, dude. I got to tell you though, here's what's funny, Randy. <sighs> You know, I listen to Mark Davis occasionally. I mean, I don't, you know, you're not listening to it because you're on the radio. Right. So uh, I called him up and said, hey, dude, you want to do my show? How's the show going? He goes, I quit last August. What? Last August? A year ago? Yeah, it's like a year ago almost. Holy crap. What's he doing now? God, nothing. I don't even him. He's doing like nothing. Really? He bought, he bought, no, he, 
He he's decided. Fine. Yeah, he's, he's just, like happy, man. Oh, he seemed really happy. Dude. Like, grid. Let me tell you about Shane. Shane will will feed his family. Shane will figure yeah. something out. And, oh, yeah. and so that's, you know, it's not too surprising. It's been over a year now. But well, I know Shane from uh, he was one of our interns uh, yeah. on the oh, wow. show. Yeah. And he was uh, uh, he was one of our best. He was he was an older guy. He was going to UNT and he was yeah. uh, he was a. Uh, um, uh, looking to get into radio and uh, he had already had a family. I mean, he's already, he already had grown kids and everything. And uh, he's just one of the hardest working dudes out there, yeah. man. And uh, he had, you, do, do you know him as the lawn ranger? No, no. He's got it. He had, you know, at the time, you know, like I said, the, the guy hustles, man. And uh, he had, uh, he's got a company called the lawn ranger goes around awesome. doing doing uh, lawn lawn work and he's and he you know he got to be so big where he had to give that up because you know he was doing commercial accounts and anything but anyway uh, I, i'm glad to hear he's doing good his, he's got a no, great band that yeah, band yeah. is something yeah, else they're, they're they unique really aren't they? yeah well he, he ended up buying some property down south of dallas and i forgot how many acres he bought and he said i'm just getting off the grid i got oh that's uh, right he did yeah yeah and so i mean it was always funny to me because i never met him until i I listen to mark davis all the time and at the end he'd always go our technical guru shane bell from shane bell band so when i want to do the festival i just called him up and said hey dude you want to come and he goes yeah of course you guys knew each other so that's yeah Yeah. so yeah so kt you have questions go ahead um I, i had a general question man you know so in high school, I did the um, the little radio broadcasting deal. That's back sure. in like the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. You know, cutting the tape and all that stuff. I know technology and all that stuff is different nowadays. Right. The old analog but, tape. Yeah, yeah. Analog old, tape. Analog, oh, yeah. Tape, yes. Yeah, and we had to do the little. You know, we learned how to do the commercial and the spots and stuff like that. But sure. and I know, um, being with the band, we used to go into the radio station all the time to talk to those guys. Well, and well, I can, wait, what's what radio station? So down in Little Rock, um, oh, okay. man, the edge, I want to say the edge was one okay. that we went to. They changed like 105, like Craig O'Neill was a big dude Did, down in Little was Rock. Was there a station there called Magic? Magic 105. Yeah. Man, classic it, it, rock. It, it, Magic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, dude, yeah, I, know, yeah. I know that. I've been in that building before. Yeah. 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 No, they, you know, the scene in Little Rock was really cool, man, especially um, as a musician back in the late 90s. Because, you know, if you look at it where Little Rock was stationed, you had a lot of bands that would go from like Dallas and and they would start moving, going towards the East Coast. Mm-hmm. But they would always, you know, going up 30, they'd always stop in Little Rock. And we used to jam at this place called Juanita's. And, dude, every band you could think mm-hmm. of would come through there, man. And it, sure. was, uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. And, and then the, the radio and the music scene back there, man, was just killer. You know, it's all, it's all gone away. Anyway, back to the question. So I'm just curious, kind of, you've been in this for a long time, 17 plus years. With was it? Yeah, with Bo and Jim. So as far as radio is concerned, was this something that you got into because of being a musician and you kind of wanted to be around those types of people? Or how how did you come to that decision to get into radio? Really? That's uh, that's. And of course, before I was before I uh, I was eight or nine years old when I first discovered that guy on the radio had two turntables. I only had one. That, so I it just boggled my mind yeah. how he could go to the next song so fast yeah. without, yeah. Talk, without talking. And so when I said, oh, he's got two of them. <laughs> and so um, then about when we, we were, I was like in the third grade, they, we, they took us on a um, field trip to KFYE Y94 at, in the Dell Webb Towers and uh, Fresno, California. Mm. And we wa- they we walked around the studio. They showed us the guy doing the behind the microphone. I, I just said, man, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And um, they, I kind of had it in me that like that early. But, you know, there was no opportunities or anything growing up. And, uh, you know, life happened. And I, I well, but before life happened, high school was still around. And I went to a pretty resourceful high school that had a lot of money there in California. And um, they had a broadcasting program. And we used to do, we used to produce a TV show every week. And so I, I uh, uh, got into beginning broadcasting in the ninth okay. grade. 
And then 10th, 11th, 12th is all advanced. And that's when we we're producing uh, TV shows uh, for the, on the local uh, independent affiliate sure. there. And we sure. had a radio studio in, in, and it was all closed circuit. You know, you only heard it that's on the killer. campus. Yeah. Yeah. On the campus. So it was, uh, there was, I was exposed to a lot of it there too. So in they there they taught you a lot of the business of it the, yeah. the advertising right. you know they'd show you a, how they radio. keep the doors open yeah exactly <laughs> they, they'd show you a radio station and they'd go by department depart by department to tell you what each guy did and uh to make money it, it's it's a, it's a money making business and uh so i did that and then life happened got, got out of school didn't really uh go to a big university or anything just kind of went and uh uh got married really early and uh um, did some really odd jobs and, but I always knew in my heart I could do it. And so I just, uh, walked into a radio station one day that had switched formats. Was this in California? Yeah. In Fresno, okay. central, central Valley, uh, California. And, um, I knew they had changed formats and they were putting on a satellite delivered mm. format. It was a uh, some country station or something before. Oh no, it was classic rock. It was right. That's right. It was okay. KC. It was KCLQ one hundred seven point five, and uh, so I went over there and I said, "Hey, are you guys uh, doing any hiring?" And uh, the lady at the front desk, who was the general manager's wife, she goes, "Well, we're we're, we're just we're not really we don't really have any staff here. It's going to be a board up thing. The the signals coming in from somewhere else." And uh, I said, "I don't care. I'll." You get, she goes, oh, "We just got board up, so I'll be a board up." Sure, we'll just yeah. Be doing the technical stuff, and uh, so I I got in there, and it turned out to be a satellite delivered format from here in Dallas called uh, Z Rock. You guys oh, familiar okay. with 991Z Rock here yeah. in Dallas? It was a uh, part of the uh, Satellite Music mm-hmm. Network, then ended up being purchased by ABC. So, anyway, we were a local Z Rock affiliate, and I, you know, you know, board up was cool, but I wanted to make some money mm-hmm. and I had some sales experience. So, I they hit me up to be a sales guy. Why not? So, I started selling spots. And then I would uh, go sell the spots and then I'd come back to the studio and I'd write and produce and make sure it got on the air because I knew I could do it, you know, and I wanted to do it, you know? And uh, so that was that. And uh, it was just a, it was kind of a a by chance thing. I I had done another thing that was really, I I had answered an ad for a station in Hanford, California, which is a home of uh, Steve Perry from journey. Okay. Um, in fact, it's kind of funny. It's kind of a side story. You know the album Raised on Radio? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The picture of the animated radio station in the front says JRNY. It's, it was the station. Yeah. It was a oh, K- wow. KNGS uh, yeah. in Hanford, California. So anyway, um, I went there, and it was, it was another sales job. So I took it. I was there for about a month because the guy didn't have any money to pay me. I, it was a commission only thing, but I was, you know, I was learning. I, I didn't give a Experience. shit. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I, yeah. I want, I wanted to get slapped in the face on the streets and be told no 95,000 right, right. times a day. But then I would, what I would do is I would come back to the radio station and I'd go into the tapes and stuff. Then this company, I was, I was selling fences, and then I, for some reason, you know how I hooked up with this dude. Uh oh, my internet connection no, you're is good. unstable. You're back. You're back. You're back. Good. Uh, the, the fences. I don't know how I hooked up with this guy, but he was the program director of the local um, uh, public radio station, KVPR. And uh, I went in and talked to him. I said, "Man, I know I can do this, but I just tell him I have no experience. Man, do you mind, you know, giving me some critiques?" And he goes, "Ah, so he was so cool, man. Yeah. Jim Myers, that's his name. To this day, I remember that guy. He he would." I would go there after I was my fence job and go in the production room, but grab a bunch of jazz records and make these dummy tapes and leave them for him the next day for to critique. Yeah. And, um, that, that's, that's, that's kind of how it happened. I just went and asked people. That's crazy. Yeah, no, no, that's great, man. I feel no, like so that's kind of what you, you have to do. Uh, let me just ask a quick question. Could you do that even now? It's completely different. It is. Business. It is. Yeah, I don't know if I could. You know, it, it, no, the, no, 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 I'm just talking about you, but just a person. Anybody that came up. Yeah. Anybody. I don't yeah. think you could do that anymore, could you? No. I. I mean, 
I would, I, I don't like to think so. I mean, I like to think that people could go sell themselves and yeah. knock on the door and get their foot in the door. And, uh, you know, I guess nowadays it's a lot of what you do, who, you know, and all that stuff, yeah. you know, but you're right. It is tough. I mean, especially when you, the, the programmers and all you, everybody's kind of so homogenized and kind of doing one thing only, hey, I'm going to turn the fan on here. So yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, you, you're right, Rick. It would be, it, it is tough and it's tough to find talent. But the thing about it is right now with, with all the podcasting going on, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's like everybody works for radio kind of. Right. Well, well, it's that funny was because when I was, yeah, when I was looking at, uh, reading a little too loud? by the way, is that too loud? I no, can't, we can't hear it. We're good. We're good. Okay. So when I was looking up some information, obviously do a little pre-show prep, um, I see where, what do they do? Bo and Jim, they just take their show and put it as a podcast. I know they have a podcast too. Yes, we have a, a, a kind of a dual episode podcast. We have uh, every day we post the full show, we give it yep. away. Uh, and, it, and it nets out to about an hour and 15 minutes. And then we also have the daily after show, which mm -hmm. is which is uh, what we do when the mic when at 950, we shut the mic off and then uh, turn it back on. But just just uh, on iHeartRadio. Okay. And that's, that's 10, 10 to 20 minutes. Sometimes we've gone as long as 30 minutes with that. And that's just a total bullshit session. Yeah. And yeah. No, there's, no, there's no rhyme or reason for it yeah. uh, other than. That's where you get uh, some of the best stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, man. Sometimes the wheels have come off on those things. Oh, yeah. and so, you know, it's it, it, it could be, well, Frank, it's sponsored right now by Frankel & Frankel. So there's some sort of revenue for, stream for the radio station. And that's right. one of the things we wanted to do. We, Bo and Jim, they didn't really, never really said, hey, let's do a podcast. Some corporate dude came to town and suggested we do, and they had us listen to this. So we, yeah. we said, "Hey, okay." So for the very next day, we said, "Let's do an after show." So we started yeah. doing that, yeah. and so that's how that works. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's just where it's going. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So you know, the interesting thing for me because when I was, I'm probably I know I'm the oldest of all three of us, but I want to be on radio because I started playing guitar in the '60s. So you know, being a radio station early '70s mm -hmm. when the FM was coming up, and you know. Hey, we're gonna play a record that's thirty minutes long, and they're like, "Oh my god, yeah, I do that." Right. <laughs> uh, but then I started, you know, I started talking to radio people at the time. I call the station up and I talk to them, and I go, "Hey, what, what do you think?" And they'd all tell me the same thing: "Don't get in this, don't get in the business. There's no money in it." I hated that. I hated <laughs> that to no, no. In fact, okay. one dude, uh, excuse me, hold on, <clears throat> shit. <clears throat> Uh, one dude, uh, <laughs> I applied for a job here in town, as a matter of fact, um, at the ABC radio networks that, that delivered a Z rock. And they had 10, 12 different formats out there that they were pumping out to local stations all over the country. Um, he told me, you should probably get out of the business. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, thank you. <laughs> It's um, no different. And no, Randy, it's no different than being a musician. No, exactly. I mean, when you, I mean, how many people say, oh, go out? My parents, did, they were like, what are you, crazy? Right. You know, what do you but, want to do? Get a real job. And that goes, and I think that goes for anything, really, that, right? That people want to do. But the guy wasn't there anymore. And I tried again and I got the job. The dude gave me a, a weekend job on the classic rock format right. at the ABC Radio Naked. Wait a minute. I mean, you're uh, okay. Yeah, you're am, back, I, am I back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah. Um, am I back? Yeah. Yeah. So I, so, so I took the, so he gave me the job at, AB, at ABC Radio and they were working on the classic rock format. And then, um, then something happened there and I got fired. <laughs> and um, then the next week I was on KZPS doing overnights. Uh, here in Dallas, yeah, this was 1996, I think it was. Yeah. And um, I did that for three months. And then I saw an ad. Do you guys remember FMQB? Friday morning quarterback is a radio. Uh, when was that? Because I didn't move back to Texas. Till 98. Yeah, well, it was, it was, it was, a, it was an industry that, thing. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like, uh, it was just, it was an industry rag about radios and records and shit like that. Yeah. They, they had, a, they had an ad in there for, uh, 
uh, KEGL. So I hit up that program director and I says, Hey man, I'm doing weekends over here at, at uh, uh, 925. I says, if you got something other than midnight to five on the weekends, I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I do. Come on over. So I started and so ever since then, I never did overnights. And then I started doing six to uh, 10 on Saturday mornings and oh. 10 to three on Sundays on the Eagle. Yeah. That was so much fun, dude. I had oh, so much fun on the Eagle. Yeah. I was, uh, in fact, there was, uh, uh, there was a time there where I was doing, you know, the, the appearances, like all the full timers were doing, you know, like, uh, going out and doing the, the client, uh, appearance, the two hour. Oh, yeah, sure. Which they don't so, do that anymore, but yeah. Well, yeah, we still do it. Do some of it? Yeah, some of them, yeah. The uh, boats have kind of gone away too. They, they are, and, and and the company kind of discourages it. But you know, a lot of times the 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 the, the clients still want them. Still want them. We, we try to say, hey, man, you know, but. They'll say we'll pay. We'll pay you what? Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm we'll, gonna we'll turn it down. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, that's that. So you, you think know, radio is always going to be around us? We'll always have radio until you know. The thing you know, about that is, is radio as terrestrial radio as we know it, right? Yeah. AM and FM um, has has been so resilient because oh, yeah. over the years, when you think about when they they were the first. Then TV right. came along. Oh, that's the end of radio. No, nah, not no, so no, much. No, you still yeah. gotta be in your car. Then, then cable TV comes along. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's gonna be the death of radio now because you know what? Because they can put yeah. digital radio, cable yeah. radio on there. People can listen <laughs> to any station they want to, yeah, and yeah. Uh, not yeah. so much. It didn't happen. Then here comes right. satellite radio. Oh, Siri, yeah. Siri Siri yeah, yeah. And oh, that's the death of local radio. They might as well yeah. just stop it now. And that and that hasn't happened yet either. And I think one of the things about it is is that local radio is still local. Sure. We, still, yeah. we, we still sell local. We still reach out to the local audience. We right. still, you know, and then we, of course it, it's been fragmented a lot now because of streaming. Right. Exactly. Of, oh yeah. A lot of people are are streaming uh, out of market. There's right. they might be streaming radio, radio, but they might like for instance uh, there's a great station I used to uh, uh, listen to not that I lived there but uh, wouldn't when I visit grandma all the time uh, it was called KLOS in Los Angeles yeah uh, uh, KLOS I found it was streaming so man I could listen to KLOS any freaking time I want to exactly. yeah. uh, all the streaming services the 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 uh, uh, Spotify and all that crap you know yeah. So, well, you know, I think also what changed was, you know, we when I grew up, it was AM radio. That's all we really listened to. Mm -hmm. And when I grew up, I lived north of Kansas City and we used to every morning I turn my radio on and listen to WHP or something like that because right. they played current music. Mm -hmm. And then when FM came in, we all switched. I started listening to FM. But sure. then in 1990, this guy called Rush Limbaugh came along and changed the AM dial tremendously because I never listened to AM. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in my car, I was leaving to go to work one day and I turned on, oh, he's on AM, who cares? Cause it's usually sports talk and all that stuff. And I got, and I said that, that changed the AM dial a lot, obviously, but then people still, you know, I would never guess to be quite frank to you that some, we're still listening to music that was recorded in 1965. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was privileged to go see Jimi Hendrix and I'm sure if he was alive today, you'd be going, man, I don't know why people are still playing voodoo chop. I don't understand. Right. I mean, it just keeps going. Yeah. And, and I really, and I'm not trying to be old here, but you know, if you look at the music nowadays, you just wonder in 20 years from now, where they're going to still be listening to that. Like they do classic rock. I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, it's, I don't think that'll ever, you know, they, 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 you know, no, it, because uh, classic rock oldies and stuff. The reason they're popular is because they were popular with the kid with when you were that age, yeah. when, when you, they were new, when, when you were a teenager and that's when your musical habits are formed, sure. basically, yeah, yeah, sure. you know? So, uh, as far as be, you know, will it go away? It hasn't yet. And it's been, I mean, and the, they lost a bunch of money. Radio companies lost a bunch of money yeah. last year because of, of COVID, yeah. but man, you know what? We, there's some people that lost their jobs and there's yeah. some, uh, some, a lot of, um, uh, good people that lost their jobs, not just on the air, uh, behind the scenes yeah. that was unfortunate. And well, people don't understand. And, and, what, that. And, and what they've done is they've just taken and uh, given, you know, less and less jobs to more people. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm just, yeah. More and more people are doing uh, less and less jobs. Like corporate. Well, I mean, do you ever think that it'll get to the point where, just like I think, 
with the music industry took that hit with Napster, right? When that came out, mm-hmm. everything just kind of went crazy. But they got through them. that though, didn't they? And they, they totally got through it. Right. With a resolution and exactly. Yeah. And, but my thought too is, I mean, w- when will it ever get to a point where you don't need the radio station anymore, right? You don't need that corporate entity the- to be able to do, you know, a show. Okay. Right? Then the, the question re- will remain. This meeting has been upgraded. What does it say? That's okay. Just it's talking about um, as far as um. I do. Minutes. I did love it. No, we're good. It's okay. still recording. Uh, so what were you saying, Randy? Okay. So what were you saying again? I was just talking about you know. Do you ever think it'll get to the point where radio, the corporate part of radio, disappears, and now it's just two guys who've been doing it well, for a long time do their own thing and start? It's kind know. of it's kind of going that way with the podcasting thing right now. The, yeah. the question the question is kind of. Two, if if that's the case, if everybody's going and getting a uh, Joe Rogan or the KT right, and the right, right, podcast yeah. and yeah. all that stuff, are they getting any local information? That's okay. that's okay. what's okay. that's what you got to ask yourself. That that uh, radio, local ra- terrestrial radio, has always been able to deliver is the local connection. Like, like when streaming became popular 10, 15 years ago, or whatever it was. Um, iTunes and all that stuff. Yep. My son, who just turned 39 this year, was, you know, this was a while. He was in his late 20s or so. He was, he was listening to all that stuff. And I would tell him about concerts coming to his town. Not my town, right, his right, town. Right, right. <laughs> and, and he didn't know about. That he didn't know about. Right. And, and he goes, Dad, how'd you know that? And I says, well, because I'm listening to the Blaze, and they're telling me because I listen to them online, right? Yeah, and yeah. the Blaze is their local rock station, and um, he didn't he, he didn't know he listens to the Blaze passively. His girlfriend uh, right now she's the she's the big uh, big radio user there in his household. So okay, so anyway, okay. um, I think it's, the question is going to come down to localism, uh, personalities. Sure, that's, that's one that's one thing that uh, you know local radio has that uh that uh, uh other local markets don't have some of them might have their their, their own bow and gym and all that stuff but right, right. and they do they have uh, uh young ron and whatever his name is in, in florida they have their own bow and gym so do you and, and the thing about taking doing hey well if bow and gym's so good here why don't you take them nationwide and go syndicate oh, yeah. Syndicate, syndicate, syndicate. That, that doesn't always work either no, no. You know, and there's a lot of work involved in that, a lot of money, and there's a lot of expectations. But anyway, um, sure. so and I don't think it'll all the way go away. So, yeah, well, I, I, hope, I, I hope not. I mean, you know, of course, all the baby boomers, we listen to it, but that's part yeah. of it, too. But the, and, thing is, and- the thing is, this technology that we all have here now, it is there are and have been some shows that started off like you guys are doing right now right yeah yeah that end up being on a real up. on a right yeah that being that, that well now they're on a terrestrial radio stations b they're on 250 of them at one time right you know right uh, because the technology warrants that you have the ability yes, to exactly. do that now yeah you know? exactly before it was like okay well we got 150,000 watts to reach out mm-hmm. across blah 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 and you're only right there and you yeah, got to get that yeah. job. You're that, you're that guy from six to 10. That's and yeah. you know, the good news is that there, those opportunities are still out there. Right. You just got to find them. Right. And it's, uh, For sure. uh, they are, they are doing a lot of piping in stuff, you know? Yeah. Well, one of the questions I have is in, is in Florida or something. So, you yes, know, please. You've been you've been doing this a long time, and you've obviously well, got to, you've got to meet a few uh, musicians along the way. I assume when they have concerts, is that true? Yes. Um, so, so I mean, I mean, you you when somebody's coming, I know it's Clapton's coming, and is he coming I felt like you're September? wanting something else from that. Like, no, 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 no. That's not what. I'm, no, 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 no. I was just saying. So when when somebody and it goes to used to be certain radio stations would obviously support the concert. Sure. And, and you've met. So so tell us, or the people are listening, some of the people that you've met that you could say were kind of interesting when you met them. Do you, have you had any cases where you go, oh, uh, yeah, this wow, guy's guy was. Of... <laughs> <laughs> Ian, Ian Anderson from Jethro mm-hmm. Tull. Oh, he just yeah. turned 70, 75 the other day. Or yeah. 70, yeah, yeah. He was uh, a strange individual. Um, <laughs> 
he, he not not really strange. We we met him. Well, one time we were backstage at I think it was the 25th anniversary concert there at the Starplex, and we would take a picture with him, and he was like nudging over to board my girlfriend, you know, and he was like, <laughs> what, you know. Come on. Um, but he's he was an interesting guy. Um, Jesse James Dupree from Jackal is always interesting. He's a, he's a, he's one of the hardest he's, working dudes in the business. Yeah, I've, uh, we played a show with him, and yeah, that dude is mm -hmm. uh, he is a very unique individual for sure. Yeah, and um, let's see who else, man. That kind of took me off guard here. Who That's else? my job. Uh, uh, <laughs> I knew old oh, Sweet Connie. I used to work with Sweet Sweet Connie. At, Did you? Um, yeah, at the J.C. Penney. She was a seamstress in J.C. Penney's in Little Rock. Is that right? And I, and I remember we used to go down there, and she, uh, she would tell us these stories about all these musicians that she had been with, and um, yeah, she loved it. She always, even back when she was doing the seamstress, she'd have her little glass of red wine. She was notorious for drinking red wine. And um, she used to always talk about that uh, Huey Lewis was the biggest, was the biggest uh, guy. She's biggest ever, star. Was the, the biggest, biggest star. Biggest star. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was. Um, she was unique. We I didn't uh, know that. So and, and and recently, um, I think it was been a couple of years ago because of course we've been shut down for the last year or so. Yeah. Uh, we were doing a Bo and Jim bash for, with ZZ Top. It was their 50th anniversary bash. Oh, yeah, that was last year. And, I think it was last year. And, uh, two years uh, ago, I don't remember. Yeah, in two, yeah, 20, 2019. Yeah. And uh, Dusty Hill, I, we, I was backstage, uh, and I told this on the other, the other day, and we played it back. I um, was going to the uh, catering uh, where the guy's – cutting up some fine prime rib for you and all that shit, you know? Okay. Uh, and uh, we're looking for some food. And then so I got done eating and I left and I was walking out and uh, across the breezeway or so was walking toward the, the uh, catering tent was a uh, uh, dusty hill. And I says, Hey, dusty hill, man. I had my recorder with my digital recorder and I said, Hey, dusty, what's up? They go, Oh man, just going to get something to eat. I go, all right. Hey, man, I'm with the radio station. He goes, ah, cool. You know, and and I said, hey, just, you know, and I was trying to engage in him, but yeah, he was kind like, of wanting yeah. to go eat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so uh, I says, hey, man, do you got a couple minutes to take a picture with me? And uh, uh, he says, oh, man, he goes, maybe after the show, because I because he was dude, he was like wearing sweats and yeah, he yeah. didn't want to he didn't want to take a picture with him. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. you. Yeah. He wanted <laughs> to be on his out. He wanted to be all his outfit. Yeah. yeah. And I said, hey, uh, uh, I just want hey, I'm a bass player, too, man. And I, he goes, oh, yeah, cool. I says, yeah, uh, I, I, something about four strings. I said, <laughs> and, and uh, he goes, he goes something like, yeah, man, four strings is all you need. Right. And I said, uh, yeah, man, five, five's way too many. Four, too many. <laughs> so it, it was, it was kind of cool having a, a little uh, encounter with Dusty. Oh, and then I, made, I took a picture with them to all three of them, actually, uh, when they played at the, uh, uh, the pavilion at Toyota's new music factory a few years ago. Uh. So I mean, but but see, the thing is, we, we don't get to see all the rock stars. We don't get to, we don't get no, like, no. But I mean, I, yeah, you you occasionally get to. Yeah, I mean, and, and, but you, a lot but of don't you sometimes? You know, kind of like me when I meet somebody famous, so to speak. Sometimes mm -hmm. like, you don't want to meet him. It's just like you know, you're like you kind of. I yeah. have a, Rick, Rick Derringer is very nice. His whole band is great. Other um, dudes. The, to the studio uh for uh, the doobie brothers were were cool i got oh i don't have it with me right here but um they uh uh played one of they played my acoustic guitar on the air and they the signed doobie it brothers, and all that stuff said? that was kind of okay yeah yeah the doobie brothers yeah, they, they came by and did a, did, a, did a deal they played my acoustic guitar they signed it they all signed it yeah. uh keith knutson one of the the drummers the past uh, late late drummers he, uh, he he's passed away his signature's on there uh steve miller steve miller was an interesting guy too in yeah. fact uh I had already had that guitar signed by the Doobie Brothers, and Steve Miller was coming <laughs> to the studio one day. And see, a lot of times these cats don't—they don't get up early no. to come no, hang out with us. They'll do an afternoon show, but they don't want to. Do yeah, it yeah. Time. Like I think yeah. Steve uh, Steve showed up at like ten, eleven o'clock in the morning, and uh, I says, "Hey, man, I'm going to bring my guitar just just in case. We'll put it in his hand, see what happens." And uh, yeah, man, he played my 
Epiphone acoustic, my $200 Epiphone <laughs> acoustic guitar that was signed by everybody. And then he signed it. And uh, I'll finish with, with, with the, these guest things with one more, Steven Tyler. He was, um, he's fun. he was pretty fun. He was another one that came like late in the, after the show. And he was talking to us. He says, you know, this is great. Cause he knew, cause he saw that we were, he was sitting there talking to a morning show with three guys. Uh, he goes, I was just talking to Joe Perry the other day is why don't we get up and go visit radio stations like we used to, Yeah, you exactly. know? And um, we said, yeah, we should, we'd like you to come, you know, but so that was a cool visit with him. And that kind of relates back to Bo and Jim back in late in like 78 when, yeah. Bo, and, when, when Bo and Jim first met in New Orleans. Jimmy worked for uh, Warner Brothers Records and his job <laughs> was taking Van Halen around town uh, to, oh, the, wow. to the radio stations to yeah. go talk, you know, and, and they were going to, and Bo was on the afternoon show or the seven to midnight show or so. So Jimmy would take Van Halen over to Bo's show. And, you know, that's back when they would do that kind of stuff. Some of them sure. still do that. The newer bands kind of do that, you know, yeah. some of the older bands, uh, you guys familiar with the dead daisies? Yeah. Yeah. You are. The, uh, the, the guy from white snake is in this, um, but uh, they'll come over and they'll do a lounge thing because they're hungry. They want to. They want to gain sure. some new fans. <laughs> yeah. And um, so yeah, the, the, the Stephen Tyler was pretty cool. But you know, it's interesting. Why did that change? I mean, how many times did I listen to the FM radio when I heard somebody say, "This is Billy Gibbons with ZZ Top"? Well, they're listening yeah. to ninety-two. Nobody does that anymore. Well, we we try. We try. Uh, In fact, uh, we got Billy and uh, Billy to do one from uh, Primo's downtown. Uh, We got, and it was one of my my digital recorders. So, but yeah, they don't really come into the radio station anymore. I think what the reason is age, time. They don't want to get up that early. And and they're coming to town and they're uh, they're going to get paid the same whether they get up and go to that radio station or not. Um, So, anyway. Well, and it's, you know, the What's changed? Stadium I guess if tours and stuff like that, man. That's dwindling down when it comes to the. I think um, it's it's definitely not like it used to be. You, you no. got your you got your kind of your cookie cutters up there now. Um, I know that music always kind of rotates and goes, you know, and changes. But mm-hmm. I I I, don't, I'm, I almost want to say that it stopped doing that as well, right? You know, where you well, can like when Brian Switzer kind of came out and he kind of replicated that '50s kind of sound and like. Now I'm kind of ready for that '90s kind of grunge alternative to kind of come back, and I don't, I don't know. I like think what, that, like what, like what '90s, like a Nirvana, Pearl Jam kind well, of. Well, yeah, just that style, the Incubus, mm-hmm. the Revis, the you know, just that '90s, mid '90s, just kind of rock. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but then, like again, that. again, that's what my that's where you know I pretty much came from as a as right. A so you you grew up so. listening to uh, 102 on the Edge. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would listen to that style of stuff. Yeah. But I mean, I was kind of uh, fortunate that my mom listened to a lot of like I was really in the Motown. I was into r and I'm a huge yeah. Prince fan. Nice. So, you know, and it wasn't just rock. I really right. tried to, to do myself to, to where I could like listen to all genres and just like really understand music as a whole. So I never pigeonholed myself to one particular genre, right? I gave them all a chance. Sure. Well, I think that's, um, you know, it's interesting because KT came to us and said, I want to do Purple Rain. Well, I'm the lead guitar player. <laughs> so, you know, people know what Purple Rain sounds like. You can't do anything <laughs> different than what, you're, you know. Say that again? So I'm out learning how to play the lead break yeah. on Purple Rain, which I went to the live version because, you know, they always put yeah. different live. And then I thought, yeah, I don't sure. know if we're going to be able to pull this off. But you know what? KT was right. People are in the back. And they're all starting to sing with us. Oh, yeah. 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 And and I don't like – I only like playing it when we're rehearsed. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah. No, and, no, no. no it, it, I just freaking hate it when somebody, yeah. hey, play Purple Rain. And everybody, yeah. they, they start playing yeah. it. I'm like, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we only we played it a couple times and then I, so any yeah. is there any new music that you're digging kt that Man, you, that's um, right now new stuff i don't know i'm trying to get into um like doing my own type of electronic stuff but like man, i really do not to be honest with you man i don't listen 
to the radio or much stuff that's out now. I'm more of a build my own playlist kind of stuff. I still, you know, gravitate um, to more of the electronic style music for the most part. Um, I listen to a little Lamb of God, even though that's not really my where I would gravitate to, but that's just more of a when I run and stuff like that. What about, I couldn't what, about, tell what, about, you. what about stuff like Chevelle and I love Chevelle. Seether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, uh, see, they're kind of. I definitely would say the Chevelle um, type of stuff. Three days, uh, three days grace. Yeah. You know, I like that. I like, uh, do you like Shine Down? I like some Shine Down. We we played a show with Shine Down once. Really? Yeah. And uh, were they cool? Shine Down was kind of cool. I think we we played in Russellville. I was with a band called Haphazard, and we uh, we had a manager by the name of Butch Stone. Butch Stone um, managed Black Oak, Arkansas. Okay. So, which is kind of funny as far as Van Halen's concerned, because Van Halen kind of modeled yeah. a lot of their stuff Jim from Jim Dave, Dandy, Dave and Rob, yeah. all that type of stuff. So, but um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't. We we played with them that that, that one place in Russellville, and I remember they were just kind of new going on tour. We knew Evanescence really well, so oh cool because they're from Little Rock, right? I like so them. I knew Ben and Amy Lee. All those guys in that band right. we're really good friends with. Really, that's cool. And uh, hey, do, do you know? Do you know um, uh, Miles Kennedy? I don't know Miles. No. Oh, you should no, listen to some of his stuff. Did and, you see the the guitar player that started no, playing? He's, he's the singer, and he plays guitar. Uh, okay, okay. But he was in. He played with Slash for a while. Okay. He, and but now, and he's it's a it's a Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. They have a new album called Ides of March out right now. You should listen to that. Yeah, and for sure. Something, and something else I'm really digging the hell out of, and I, is a uh, uh, Wolf, Wolfgang stuff. Mammoth Wolfgang. Wolfgang Van Halen. Mammoth. Oh, w- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mammoth uh, WVH. Have yeah. you guys heard this at all? No, not at no, all. I've seen a little bit on the Twitter about him, but I haven't. You know, oh my heard. god! See, this is my problem right here: is the fact that you know I don't go searching for this type of stuff, right? right? So right. you telling me this stuff is kind of, but that's that's been my biggest deal, man. Is I really, and I, I think I'm getting to the point now where I do want to go out there and start digging around. And um, yeah. you know, well, do, do you use a music uh, a streaming service? No, not at all. Well, there, there's they're all over YouTube and stuff, sure. but he, he's got an album out called uh, Mammoth WVH where he performed every instrument on the album. Oh, really? And, yeah, kind of a Prince type, a Prince, exactly. And a, a Prince, uh, Paul McCartney, because Paul McCartney's first solo album was yeah. all him as well. Yeah, yeah. He had it was him and a producer, and he uh wrote. All the songs performed every instrument. Now he's got a five piece awesome. band. Now he's got yeah, a five yeah. piece band that he's out on the road with, opening up for Guns and Roses. That's killer. They're freaking yeah. phenomenal. And the, if you ever get a chance to listen to the whole album from head to toe, I I, I just freaking love it. Ever since June thirteenth or June eleventh, yeah. when it came out, I've been I've listened to it thirty five hundred times. Does uh, so so Axel back out? He plays bass, doesn't he? Axel. No, he okay. plays everything. Everything. No, yeah. I mean when they play out. Does he no, play he out? play. No, he's a front. He lead, lead singer, guitar, yeah. and, oh, I didn't know that. and keyboards. His bass player, just because he played bass, play, bass with Van Halen in twenty six. Yeah, because I remember. When, yeah, because I remember seeing. Yeah. him because what's he, his face he played, he, He's lead singer, guitar player, and keyboards, and then he's got a dedicated kick uh, uh, bass player. They're they're all kick ass. They're all his That's friends. Funny, uh, they, they're all in uh, other bands. They they came from other bands, uh, and you know. Uh, Wolfgang played in the band Tremonti. Guitar for Creed. Uh, he is really talented. I'm getting really sick of everybody saying, um, "Oh, he wouldn't. You wouldn't be listening to that if he wasn't Eddie's son." It's bullshit, man. He's oh, he's well, good, he's a talented kid, well, you're talented musician. That. You're gonna get that. Yeah, I know. And, and, and that it's whole so, coattail so argument. Well, you know, you know, maybe yes, he had better chances. Um, being his son, mm-hmm. yes, he had the access to the musicians, but that doesn't discredit him as an artist. Himself, exactly, right? Because yeah, it, he's just not you have all that doesn't mean you're going to be good. And he's not over there going. Brruh, brruh, brruh. He's yeah, not doing yeah. any of that, man. He's so making sick. spaghetti, as I like to call it, making spaghetti. Yeah, you well, know, you know I, doing that. You, you think about it. If you're looking at, I bet you've walked up to somebody who's 16 or 17. They may even know who Van Halen is. Yeah, well, I mean, there's the young people. I mean, yeah. my granddaughter. She, I tell her, what do you listen to? And she's all over the board. How old, your, how old is your granddaughter? She'll be 18 next month. 
She, so, she so, now her her age group. Some of these the eighteen to twenty five year old guys, they're listening to, to Lone Star. They're listening yeah, to classic yeah, rock yeah. and and yeah. hearing and discovering Jimi Hendrix and Journey and all this stuff for the first time. Well, so I'm she sure came if you up, played Jump or one of those oh, songs, yeah, she'd be like, yeah. "Oh yeah, no, I know exactly." Yeah, yeah. she came up to me the other day, and of course, my stu- we're in my studio right now. But I, she says, "I want you to know how to play this song," and I can't remember the guy's name. And so I said, "Well, play it on me," because she listened to I don't know what Spotify or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was like listening to old rock. It was two chords. It was a C minor and a B minor, B B flat. <laughs> I go and, and about two minutes. That was it. And, and so, it's so a really new like artist. That. It's a yeah, new artist. I think it was fairly new. Yeah, and where my music comes from now is I'm on Instagram. I'm always pushing my album out and all that stuff. But I listen to all the new artists that are on there because they start following you. And I really artists. like the fact that artists is the fact that I can listen to people all over the world. Yeah, that is cool. I mean, they'll join me and I'll say, hey, and then I'll call like the other day. Some acoustic gal out of London joined me. And she is my handles, Texas rocker. And I said, do you have an EP out or something? And she goes, no, I'm in the studio right now, but she had all this stuff about playing acoustic guitar in London. So you get, and then, and then this Egyptian group started following me, these gals. And I thought, who are these people? And so you start listening to music and I really wanted to do this. And I still want to do it. I've reached out to a couple of people, one in, in London and one in Mexico. I'd really like to do a combination where you could get different musicians together to do something. And, and the way we do that, obviously, everybody records at home anymore. A lot of people yeah. do. They just send me the WAV file. The guy down in Mexico is great. He's a metalhead. But I, he said, I'll play on it. Well, I'm going to change your life. There's a, new, <laughs> there's a new plug-in from Mixed in Key. Now, this is not sponsored. Then We do not sponsor them. <laughs> they have not given me anything well for free. <laughs> but there's a free plug-in called Satellite from a company called Mixed in Key that allows you to collaborate in, in real time, time with anyone around the world. Um, and it's, it's amazing. Remote production is where it's at, man. It's amazing. Yeah, if, you, wow. if, if you go listen to the new, the brand spake and new Doobie Brothers album, all yeah, remote. Came out. All remote. Yeah, all these, remote. I've seen them on you know, YouTube where they do their remotes. The, the Sammy Hagar in the circle. Yeah. All remote. Well, the, in a, you know, you look at technology's good i don't think it's as good as going into the studio but here's my reasoning for for doing that is regardless how much money you spend in a studio no matter how good you try to make it sound no one's going to go buy the disc or the flack and put it in and listen to it for the most part Mm -hmm. the way you wanted them to hear it from the studio right they're going to dumb it down they're going to turn it into mp3 they're going to listen to it from the phone or they're going to stream it over the internet Mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about spending 150 200 300 thousand dollars in a high-end studio to get good quality stuff these days because like i said people are going to dumb it down anyway yeah right? well the hardest so. thing for me and kt knows this you probably when you record like i i do i record here to do all the stuff and then you never know where they're going to listen to it at so you know you list it on headphones or you list to your monitors you mix it for that is it going to be an am radio i mean they're going to put it to a, a you know Alexa or to one little speaker. And so you have to try to figure out how do you mix it for all that stuff? And it's impossible. So yeah, I'll listen to it and I get it, I'll get a good mix and I'll push it out and people and I'll tell them, hey, don't and I every time I do I tell them this, don't listen to it on Alexa. I mean, try try to get a system or something. So yeah, to it, 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 but that's so difficult to do. I know. I know. Uh, you and, 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 in the, and in the general real world of it all, these guys, I, you know, we get the, we get recordings from. Uh, in, in a lot of times, it's MP. These days, record uh, companies to right. interview somebody, and the mastering on them are slammed yep. so hard to the top. Yep. I mean, they're not yep. distorting. So there's, they're using some, some great mastering tools. Yep. Um, but uh, yep. I just don't get it. I just don't get how, how they slam it so hard and yeah. give it zero headroom. That's really where your money is these days is in the mastering part. Yeah. It ain't really in the recording. It's that mastering piece. Mm-hmm. So, well, and, and I, of course, the mastering's got to—you got to have a start with a good product to begin exactly. with. Exactly. So. Well, oh, that's yeah. just it. I mean, oh, oh hey, are we are we about you got about to wrap it up or something? Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Yeah, we yes. got about we've uh, we got about ten minutes left. So okay, we don't, we don't uh, have to go that far. We could wrap her up before we leave. I want to tell you because the whole rock star thing and it keeps coming up and it, thoughts keep it. going ahead. And we just mentioned Sammy Hagar. I, he was the most recent guy we met. 
um, it was a few weeks ago at the, at Texas Motor Speedway. It um, did you guys see the NASCAR All Star Race? That's what it was, and it was in oh, June. No, I haven't. No. Okay, so the NAS- NASCAR hired him to come to town to play i can't drive 55 oh yeah and uh yeah, so yeah. we just found that out that day so i mean the, uh, the couple of days before that so i reached out to his management and we worked out a deal to where me and bo and jim are going to go visit him in his suite and we did and it was cool uh it was hotter than hell but uh-huh. one of the coolest things is he bre- he broke out some of that new tequila he has oh yeah oh. it's called santo is it and- awesome yeah. It's it's awesome. <laughs> it's it's thirty nine dollars a bottle. Hey, but uh, uh, but anyway, he poured in Bo, and you know, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll take take a shot of that. Bo's like, I don't really like tequila, and Sammy's like, oh, you'll like this tequila, <laughs> and and we and so you start to learn the difference between one hundred percent agave tequila right, versus right. Cuervo. Yeah. Or the the commercial stuff that you get out in the store is like yeah. night and day, man. Right. And it's so it and it's so smooth and so good. And I've already been through four bottles of that stuff. So exactly, so that yeah. was cool. It was it was it was unique uh, hearing from him and and having him pour me a shot of tequila. That was that was. Uh, does he does he look like he's seventy two or something like that now? He looks so. great. He sounds great. Him and yeah. him and Vic Johnson, the guitar player from the Circle, were there to do it. And then they had the backing tracks of of. Uh, the drummer uh, Jason Bonham and Michael Anthony on bass and, yeah. lead and backing vocals. Oh, they had that on the back track and they did, they did, I can't drive 55 in the stands right there at Texas motor speedway. Yeah, that's killer. Doesn't Steve, I thought I saw something of that. Doesn't Steve Vai play up for them? Does he play? No, for them? no, no. No, it's uh, uh, Vic, Vic Johnson. He's a, he's a black dude. Uh, yeah. he, he used to be in a band called the bus boys. The boys are back. You know that those yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that was years ago. So for anyway. sure. No, good stuff, man. Well, man, thank you so much for for being on here with man, us today. Thanks man, thanks for That's inviting a, me. As I had a good time. Yeah, dude. I learned quite a bit, and I'm definitely checking out this new music you told me about. Man. Mammoth so WVH. That. Check it. it out. I'm on and, it. For and sure. and Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Yes. Yes. So I'll add them to the playlist today. <laughs> All right, KT and the trout. Good luck on your thing here. And uh, thanks, man. Randy. Thank you very much, my friend. Hope some big success for you guys down the road. And I'm, it looks like you guys are having a lot of fun. And that's what it's all yeah. about, right? Oh yeah. I don't yeah. care who listens. We're not. We're not doing this to get rich. We're having fun. That's it. That's right. Yeah. That's about the... So you have a great afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Randy James, ninety-two five right. Lone Star. Thank you, buddy. Have a good day, Randy. Thank you. Have a good one, man. Love all right, man. You. See you. I'm KT. And I'm the Trout. And we are out. out.